Why hello there my fellow open world gamers and Just Cause 3 fanatics everywhere we got brand new gameplay from Just Cause 3. Remember we've got an extensive backlog of Just Cause 3 coverage right here on open world games and we are going to be covering the game extensively so subscribe if you are new but for now guys enjoy the brand new footage. I'm Roland Lesterlin, the game director for Just Cause 3, and welcome to the beautiful Mediterranean island chain of Medici. As Rico Rodriguez, you'll explore all 400 square miles of this vast open world. But right now, let's just jump straight into free fall towards the town of Alba. At Avalanche Studios, we love building huge sandbox worlds. And everything you see here on the screen, you can travel to. The hills, the mountains, the beaches, you name it, what you see, you can go straight to it. The story behind Medici is that it's being held under the brutal control of the dictator, General Di Ravello. And as you can see, his domineering presence can be felt throughout all the towns and the villages. Inspiring a revolution to free the people is no simple task for any ordinary citizen. But Rico is no ordinary person. With his unique tools of destruction and large arsenal of weaponry, it's entirely up to you on how you want to free the people. It can all start with toppling one of the classic symbols of General Di Ravello's rule. see Rico using the physics of the world, and his new multi-tethers, to force Di Ravello's statue into inflicting damage upon itself. Alright, so with the statue destroyed and Di Ravello's tyrannous grip on the town of Alba no longer quite so tight, let's have a look at Rico's new upgraded grapple. As with JC2, traversal is very much at the heart of the experience. The Medici is packed with activities, challenges, and opportunities for creative destruction. Now here we can see one of Di Ravello's propaganda spouting speakers, so let's make quick work of it and tear it down. Using his tethers, Rico is able to rip chaos objects like this from their supports. And as you destroy these pieces of propaganda, you further weaken Di Ravello's influence over the area. Gas stations were so much fun in JC2, we decided that we wanted to take them out of the core chaos progression system and just allow players to destroy them as many times as they want. And our physics play to our favor as a train reaction kicks off and the whole place goes up. Let's take advantage of Rico's brand new wingsuit, which completes Rico's set of aerial abilities alongside the grapple and parachute. As you can see here, the sense of speed with the wingsuit deployed is unparalleled, and with the right terrain, we can cover huge distances very quickly. Just as with the parachute, Rico can use his grapple to pull himself along, thus giving him an additional speed boost, and have tons of fun doing it. Well, let's apply a little out-of-the-box thinking with one of the many airborne vehicles in the game. Rico can fly anything, so hijacking this jet really isn't an issue. And this might be a multi-million dollar military plane, but in Rico's hands, it's a very big and expensive bullet. Alright, so we've blown up the refinery and we've seen the cascade of destruction. Now let's take to the roads in a souped-up sports car. In Just Cause 3, there are over 80 different air, land, and sea vehicles for you to drive, crash, do whatever you want with. Our driving model has been completely overhauled since Just Cause 2, giving players more control over the vehicles themselves, as well as increasing their destructibility. And of course, there are numerous race challenges for you to play that will allow you to unlock vehicle-based mods to improve your rides. We're not a racing game, so going off-road in our world can be lots of fun. Our state-of-the-art destruction extends even to vegetation, so if you're under heat trying to get away from people, you can plow through fields of sunflowers and lavender fields, even through bushes and trees. So we'll stop here. Thought I'd give you an opportunity to blow up something truly massive. I guess we're going man versus bridge with our super powerful Hydra missiles and see what kind of damage we can cause. Shooting out the supports will result in the bridge destroying in tons of different ways. And this means you can come up with your own great action moments. And that's the core of the sandbox experience.
With the bridge out of commission, Rico can focus on the next objective. And to make that a little easier, we've instituted a new Rebel Drop system. The Rebel Drop system allows Rico to order weapons and vehicles at a moment's notice via airdrop. This beautiful and peaceful flight offers us another opportunity to show off a new feature, and that's our new stunting system. So we moved away from the specific authored points on vehicles from JC2 and allowed the player total freedom on top. So if you jump out onto the plane, you can actually walk around the plane wings themselves. And of course, the plane itself can be used as a means of destruction. Maybe we should get off the plane first. Let's swap out wings for wheels and take a motorbike for the remainder of our journey. And while it's nice to weave along Medici's roads with the wind in our face, it is inevitable that Diravello's men will catch up. We can do combat directly from the bike, and eventually defeating Diravello's military. And here we are at another of the General's huge military facilities. So let's put all of Rico's abilities and tools to the test, and take down Vigilator Sud's huge communication spires and satellite dish, and cripple the General's hold on Sirocco.